In the previous lecture, we were able to um, key bind the bumper of the um, Magic Leap um, uh, peripheral device, and we're able to instantiate these herbs that you see right there from uh, straight from uh, pressing B, which is the key binded to the bumper. Now, what we would love to do is use the physics. So have these herbs or whatever object just behave like a regular ball because that's what we wanted at the beginning. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, so inside of Unity, in the content, I'm going to double click on the controller ex example and open the controller example script, C sharp script. And inside of that script, if, uh, let's go to the place where we instantiated the new ball. As you can see, the new ball is instantiated here, right in front of the camera with two units in front. Now, what's happening here is that we want it to also um, uh, fall. And in order to do that, it needs a rigid body. So we could either add a rigid body to the ball, or uh, we can just select an object that already has a rigid body. And inside of Unity, we can definitely find some that are already created for us. Go to the prefabs folder of the Magic Leap Unity package and locate the meshing sample ball. This one, as you can see, it already has a rigid body and it uses gravity, so it will automatically fall. So let's go ahead and use this in the controller example. Right here under ball, instead of the earth, just select the, um, the meshing sample ball right here double click there and you will see it there now um, my next step is to make it a little bit bigger so what i want to do is just duplicate it so that i don't mess up with this prefab i'm gonna right click and click on duplicate to do that uh, let's see where it is i don't see the duplicate somehow but that's not a problem you can just click there and press ctrl d or command d for duplicate or edit duplicate that's another way to do it here it is and I'm going to rename it just to custom, add the word custom right in front of it because it's mine, okay? And now going back to the controller and selecting my custom one, which will be at the front. Let's see, you guys see it? There it is. All right, so double click and we have it. So I'm gonna mess with it and make it a little bit bigger so that it's easily, um, we can easily see it. So selecting the custom mesh, and you see that the original scale is 0 0.2, so I'm going to put it to 0 0.8, all right? So 0 0.8, X, Y, and Z, all of them are 0 0.8, all right? And I just changed the prefab, so whatever I'm going to instantiate will have the new scale. All right, having uh, done so, now if I press play and go to the Magic Leap 1 simulator, um, this will automatically fall, right? Because it uh, has a rigid body so let's see all right it's still loading here we go now i'm going to move around and i'm going to press b to spawn this ball so i just press b and i saw it right here really quickly on unity i saw it fall and if you take a look here we don't see it anymore do you guys know why well it's pretty obvious um it's right there you guys see the custom meshing ball and look at the Y position. You guys see that? The Y position keeps going down. So basically the ball keeps falling. So if you go to the scene, you can actually see it fall. If you double click, you keep seeing it fall, but it's falling so fast that it's actually hard to see. Okay, so we need a way to prevent it from falling. How do you do this? Well, that's when we need the spatial mapping so that um, the Magic Leap um, scene would know that, hey, we have, we, have, um, we have a ground here. Um, we don't want objects to go through the ground. We want them to stop right there, right? And same thing with the walls. We don't want the objects to go through the walls. So how do you do this? Well, lucky for us, Magic Leap already created such an object. If you click on Prefab, you will see the ML Spatial Mapper. All right, so I want you to drag and drop this inside of your scene. All right, and that's it. At uh, this point, there's not much you, you have to do. Um, now let's press play and we'll see the mapper appear in the eye view of the simulator. Let me show that to you. You guys ready? About to show. Yeah, by the way, things take longer as you add more objects, obviously, because it needs to do more calculations, especially 
when you add an ML spacer, it's calculating all the objects that it sees in the real world. So it's seeing that there's a table and there's uh, also a bunch of uh, lamps. So now let's go ahead and press B and see what happens. You guys ready? I'm going to press B and boom, we saw, uh, we saw a ball going there and somehow we don't see the ball anymore. So I believe that uh, the ball may have bumped and it went somewhere else. Uh, actually, yep. Uh, let me just um, go back and we see the ball right there. Okay. So now I'm going to press B again to instantiate a new ball. Boom. We see the ball. Even here in UT, we see the ball going and the ball going there as well. Excellent. So, so far, so good. Oh, but somehow it fell. So somehow it did not recognize the wall, which is really weird. So that's kind of a bug, I guess, um, which I guess it's okay for now, right? Okay. Now, what if you want that ball to uh, go faster? So let's play with the force. So I'm going to go in Visual Studio and look at the controller example. And right here where we have the new ball, let's add some speed to that. How do we do this? Well, we need to mess with the rigid body. So let's go ahead and get the rigid body from the new ball. So rigid body, let's call it body, is equal to new ball dot get component and the component we want is the rigid body component and from there we want to play with the rigid body but not every object will have a rigid body so let's just make sure we have one if the rigid body so if the body is not null so, so if we have a body okay so if we have a body let's add some force to it so vector 3 so let's create a force is equal to um, that would be the camera. We want it to be uh, to in the forward position. So that with camera dot main dot transform dot forward. So that's for sure. And then how was the was the intensity or the strength? So time. Uh, let's create a new variable. Let's call it intensity. Intensity. Okay. Oh my bad. Obviously, it's going to do that because I need to create that variable. So let me just leave that here for now and go all the way up. And let's create this as a public variable so that we can play with it. So public, let's create it as a float intensity. And let's give it a default value of 50.0f because it's a float. All right, so now that we have this intensity, let's add it to our code uh, right here. By the way, I have a typo here, it's vector, all right, times intensity. Here we go. And let's apply that force to the to the uh, rigid body. So that would be body dot and here add force. And the force that we will add is obviously the force that we created. And that's it. Save that. Go back to Unity. And um, inside of Unity, click on the controller example and check this out. Under the ball, you have a new parameter called intensity. We have an intensity of 50. Just to exaggerate, I'm going to put an intensity of, let's say, 400 so that we can really see the ball moving faster. All right, so let's go ahead and play with that. I'm going to press play and I'm going inside of the uh, Magic Leap Simulator. And once the Unity is loaded, I'm going to be able to go in the view. And um, actually, let's I'm going to take I'm going to put it in a full screen and see how it goes on my computer. It might be actually really uh, difficult to play okay here we go so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna move backward and i'm gonna throw the ball all right okay i don't want to be outside of the zone so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm making sure that i'm still inside okay and i'm gonna press b for the bumper to be able to launch it and here we go Okay, so the ball is going and it went through the wall. Um, let's see here. The ball is going and it stopped also. Okay, so it recognized the wall. So I'm going to throw a bunch of balls now and see if that can keep going. I always wanted to do this in real life, play with thousands of balls. And uh, that seems to go. I mean, it's kind of slow, but uh, uh, as you can see, all the balls are, um, are actually interacting with each other within the simulator. So, so far, so good. Everything's great. So I'm sure uh, you guys must have lots of ideas now. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with that. So go ahead and uh, let your imagination go wild. If you learned something in this video, please 
press the like button it's free so go ahead and do it also i love when people leave comments uh, if you want to say anything even just say hi or thanks or or you suck or whatever you want go for it i love uh, you, when you guys are commenting out and if you like this type of videos uh, give me some feedback subscribe and let me know you guys take care now